the height h of a projectile is a function of the time t is it is in the air. The height is in feet, all right, for t seconds, and is given by the function h of t is equal to negative 16t squared plus 96t. What is the domain of the function? All right, so just remember down here, guys, that the domain is simply the possible values of x that a function is allowed to have, okay? Now, in terms of this problem, though, right, we don't have x's, okay? We have h's and t's, but the idea here is that the domain, in other words, when we talk about x, we really think about the independent, independent variable, okay? So what's the independent variable in this problem? The independent variable in the problem is time, okay? It's the t. So time here is going to be equal to, or is, I should say, time is the independent variable. All right. So my domain is going to be centered around the time value. So now in this particular context, this is more of a, this is math, but it, it kind of gets a little into physics here. Um, the reason being is because mathematically, when you look at this function, right, when you look at h of t, and I'll write it down, h of t is equal to negative 16t squared plus 96t. When you look at this function and you think mathematically, you're thinking, well, are there any limitations on t? Can I plug in any value for t I like? And sure, I can, right? It could be t could be negative 5 million. It could be positive 5 million, blah, blah, blah. So mathematically, there's no real mathematical limitation here as to what t can be. But, so you might conclude incorrectly, though, that the domain of this particular function is from negative infinity to positive infinity. It's not, that's not necessarily true, okay? So, on, for this problem, okay, the, you have to consider the physics of what's happening, right? The, the, the idea that I, we have a certain projectile, okay? So, pretend that, um, pretend that you're over here and you're going to throw a ball, okay? Pretend that you're over here and you're going to throw the ball, all right? And let's say it starts off at height zero, okay? So let's pretend that this right here is going to be the h would be zero, okay? The height is zero. So if you throw the ball, it's going to make an arc that kind of looks like this, right? And it's going to come back down eventually, okay? So we do know, though, right, that if this is the case, we know that we have to start at zero, right? The height, the initial height is at zero, and the final height is also at zero, okay? Now, this being the case, we know that in this function here, right, the height, which is h of t, this represents the height, okay, has to be zero at two different points, all right? Now, if I plug in the value of zero, Right, what happens now to the math here? Well, how can we now solve this equation when we plug in zero? Well, we can simply now just set, right, we can factor out a t here. I'll do the math now on this side. So this is gonna be zero is equal to t times, t times uh, negative 16, negative 16 t plus 96. I know the t's are looking like pluses, plus 96. How do you solve this thing now? Well, you set the t here. You set these two things basically equal to zero, right? So t is equal to zero, and we also have negative 16t plus 96 is equal to zero. Right? You can add this bad boy on over to the right-hand side, and then you would divide both sides by 16, right? So essentially, you would have, I'm just saving space. So essentially, it works out to 96 over 16. And what is that? reduced down to 96 over 16 and six, right? I just needed the calculator for that. Might not be a good sign. Okay, so six, right? So six seconds. So what this tells us, okay? Let's think about this. What this tells us is that there are two times, all right? Two t values, right? When, t when, when time is zero seconds and when time is going to be six seconds, that the height is equal to zero. But that's also what we thought, right? The physics tells us it should be that way. 
right? If it starts off at the zero point, it's eventually going to reach some height and then come back down. It's going to reach that same height, zero, some time later. How long? How long later from the initial point will it reach the final height of zero or coming back down to Earth? Well, six seconds, okay? So what we actually did here was we found the domain, okay? So like I said, that's the difference between math and physics, all right? I mean, math is part of physics. You need math to figure out uh, physics. I think physics is very interesting, all right? Um, you can do a lot with it. So uh, in pure math speak, right, if we, if, we don't, if we just look at this thing and we don't know any information from the problem, we would conclude that the domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. But given now this information, given this physics information, we now know that there are certain constraints as to what the time can actually take, all right? So the true domain of this problem is going to be from inclusive, that is, Anywhere from zero seconds all the way to six seconds. Because after six seconds, the thing has come back down to Earth. All right? So hopefully this helped, guys. I know it's a challenging uh, problem, but uh, I think hopefully it makes sense. All right? So I look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.